the key NC Groundworks Scottish Rally Championship returned to the gravel for round five of the 2022 season, the RSAC Scottish Rally. And with just over 60 starters, the entry was relatively light, but the quality was there in speeds. There was late drama before the start though, with Jock Armstrong having to pull out of the event after co-driver Cammy Freer was involved in a mountain bike accident during the week. And also pulling out, Bruce McCombie and Michael Kutz ran out of time, getting their Focus WRC ready for the start. And both Alistair Brearley and Ernie Lee were forced to miss the event after testing positive for Covid. But all the other top names were in attendance, lined up behind David Bogey and John Rowan, making their Fiesta Rally 2 debut. Hey, it's a lot different to obviously the Mini, which I've been using this yeah. season, so you know there's there's a lot to learn. You know, the, the car's fantastic, there's there's no issue that way, but I think learning the car with every stage, making changes and trying to find more speed, so yeah, it's going to be an interesting day. What's your approach to today then? Oh, just the way it's been all, all season, we'll just need to go and, good, try, try and give it try and give it as best as we can, that's all we can do, and uh, see, see what the times are like, but I don't feel the best prepared for this one, but you never know. Yeah, we're really looking forward to it, good wee test yesterday, and... Um, yeah, perfect day for it. Good. Are you just back from America or where are you been? Uh, yeah, just back from America the day before yesterday, so um, struggling with the jet lag a bit, but all good. You could sleep last night, so. Any chance to try test the new car on the gravel or? No, no chance. It was no. a bit last minute me doing this really, to be honest, because I was a bit tied up at work. But, managed, but he wanted points. Get, managed to get one, well, managed to get one day, so I basically just drove up today and the good. car's on gravel, so it's just a test. It's just a test. Uh, well, the results show it's just a test. <laughs> no, I can't predict the future. <laughs> Three stages would make up the first loop. The rain always threatening. Third quickest in stage one, Michael Binney and Claire Mole confessed to feeling rusty over the opening three miles. But that feeling clearly didn't last at the Evo fastest in both stages two and three to arrive at first service with a one second lead. Looking to play themselves in, David Henderson and Chris Lees headed out on used tyres for the opening loop and were surprised to be equal fastest in stage one. They backed that up with two top three times on two and three, the Fiesta just one second behind the Evo after three stages. Three left fast up, 60, press and slow, four right, into two left, you'll see it, opens, into two right, 100. And just three seconds off the lead, Freddie Milne and Patrick Walsh were on form over the opening loop. The Fiesta man finding his flow back on the gravel and was really enjoying himself, despite a small concern over the car's brakes. All right, go on yourself. Oh, another Tied with Benny after stage one, Hugh Brunton and Drew Sturrock were continuing their good form from Argyle. The R5 suffering a slow puncture in two and a small rear suspension issue in three, but was still fourth, 17 seconds behind the top three. After a rough start to their season, John Wink and Neil Shanks were reminding everyone that they were a force to be reckoned with. Despite catching a car in stage two, the I-20 was just four seconds behind fourth after three stages. Always quick in these forests, Angus Laurie and Paul Gribben were the early leaders in the Alban Garage Challengers. Just six seconds behind the Hyundai, the Evil crew were keeping everything neat and tidy on the loose stages. And fast left four. 100. Right two. Into turn left nine. 40. Left five. Into right four. Over crest. And it tightens the right six. And left two in. Very long left five and right six, 130. ALM teammates Willie Patherson and Tom Hind had struggled to readjust to the gravel over the first two stages. Stage three saw them pick up a puncture. 
leaving the Red Evil 35 seconds down on Laurie and Gribbon. Switching back to their fiesta for the gravel, John Rintoul and Ross Hind were another crew to suffer a puncture on the opening loop. And they were also troubled with a small misfire towards the end of each stage, but were still just six seconds behind Patterson and Hind. Topping the Autoshop two-wheel drive standings after three stages, Stuart Eggleston and Brian Hodgson were running well. The loose stages suiting the Pinto engine escort down to the ground and they were six seconds up on both Peter Stewart and Steve Bannister. The 208 and historic Mark II tied on time after the opening loop. Where was the new rally too? Well, Bogey and Rowan were equal fastest over the first stage, but then were the victims of a double puncture in stage two. And with only one spare, they were out before the rally had really begun. Also out early, Scott McCombie and Murray Strachan's prop shaft would snap off the start line of stage two. Uh, yeah, it's going a lot better than I had anticipated, to be honest with you. Um, felt pretty rusty on the first stage and the time showed, but um, the next two stages were got into nice rhythm, um, especially the third stage, it was just nice and smooth and finding this car on that regraded stuff just just bounces about all over the place, you know, yeah. it really doesn't like it, it just about yeah. spatters off a few times. If, we, if the stages are nice and smooth and we can really get a charge at it, it, it seems to be much better. So. Um, yeah, uh, fingers crossed. Stay in this fingers crossed. We can... Stay where you are. Well, let's hope so. Yeah. Your test seems to be going rather well. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how that happened. If, <laughs> if, if I'm honest, I uh, uh, had a very cautious first stage, and then and then when we came out of it, we had the same time as David. I'm, I'm really not. I'm not sure. And then and then I thought, oh, this should improve for me, and didn't really. So so I don't know. We just seem to get straight on it. What one off the lead? Yeah, apparently. Not I mean, bad, we started we we started on part one tyres as well. We didn't put new ones on, so. Oh, you're sure not put, now. <laughs> no, we'll put some, we'll put some new ones on now, and I hope hopefully we'll find a little bit with that. Yeah, really enjoyable. I lo that last stage, I just loved it. It was um, very very fast, and um, I actually kind of we lost a bit of time there, and I kind of had the thought in the last mile. I thought we got away with too much here, so we back off a bit. <laughs> Wrong attitude. Backed off too much. Yeah, lost definitely. three seconds off the lead. <laughs> It's definitely, definitely uh, really good. Just perfect. This is ideal for day for I think. You know? Yeah. So far, but hey, we're only halfway there, so um, it's easy to say that just now. But it's not over until the end. Nope, it's not. So, yeah. No, it's definitely not. Uh, Are you enjoying it? Yeah, good. I just keeping it tidy. Um, no heroics. Cars behaving. Yeah, it's fine. Aye, all behaving. So we're all good. I Two stages would make up the middle loop, the rain now falling steadily. And this loop belonged to Binny and Mole, fastest on both stages and crucially, avoiding mistakes and punctures. The Evo now leading by 32 seconds. Second quickest on both stages, Brunton and Sturrock were also puncture free. Drew very impressed with Hugh's performance behind the wheel in the difficult conditions. Laurie and Gribben continued their excellent run, the evil moving into third over this loop, despite riding their luck. And flat right two. OK, we're all right, right two, 60, very long right four, very long right four. But Henderson and Lee's luck, on the other hand, deserted them. A puncture and spin in four dropped them to sixth in the SRC. SS5 and they climbed back up to fourth, despite a second puncture. The Fiesta crew relieved that they thought to take two spares. Patterson and Hind visited a ditch twice on stage four, but five was an absolute blinder. The Red Evo third quickest, despite Willie feeling that he couldn't find any grip. Mm -hmm. 
Eggleston and Hodgson continued to lead the two-wheel drives. Keeping things neat on the loose stages, Stuart was really happy with his run through A in particular. Having figured out that the misfire was due to the ECU overheating, Rintoul and Hind had jury rigged a pipe to blow cold air from the roof vent onto the ECU. It didn't sort it fully, but it definitely helped. Peter Stewart and Harry Marchbank moved into second two-wheel drive outright over these stages. The 208 now just three seconds clear of Bob Adamson and Jamie Edwards. The Fiesta crew keeping things neat and puncture free and reaping the benefits. After burning the midnight oil to repair a power steering seal on the Friday night, Mark McCulloch and Michael Hendry's difficult Scottish continued. A puncture in stage two had delayed them and they were struggling to find any decent grip. The second loop was better after some suspension tweaks and they were up to 10th, but still not happy. You don't want to talk to me. It's a disaster. <laughs> Why is that a disaster? <laughs> I, just that. I think this is the worst day's rally I've had forever. <laughs> now third two-wheel drive, Steve Bannister and Dave Robson had not enjoyed stage four, finding the loose surface very difficult to deal with. Stage five was better, but they were a bit frustrated at second service. Now missing from the leaderboard, Milne and Walsh suffered both a double puncture and removed a brake pipe all in one stage, continuing their run of bad luck. Also retiring, Winkin Shanks would run wide on a right-hander in five and roll the I-20 off a tree. Thankfully they were unhurt, but the car will need some work. Championship sponsor Kevin Crawford and Andrew Stevenson were loving the return to gravel, battling with the Rally 2 Fiesta of Adamson and Edwards. But that would end when the gearbox went on a road section. Kevin disappointed, but looking forward to the rest of the year. Jordan Anderson and John Shepard's day had started well, leading the Subaru Cup, and catching a Rally 2 Fiesta in Stage 2. But unfortunately, they were forced out with engine failure after Stage 3. Uh, yeah, very, very tricky. Um, really very little grip and um, just be so easy to get a puncture. You know, there's sharp rocks everywhere. So we're just really trying to pick our lines and not, not go so crazy. It's preserving your lead now, isn't it? Well, yeah. It's keeping it there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So just do our best to keep our eye out for anything that's going to cause us any issues but it'll be what it'll be you never you just never know do you so um we'll do all that we can and You're then still smiling, so. yeah inside i'm not <laughs> yeah really good we're up to second now so we had to slow right off unfortunately for um unfortunately john wink had a, had a bit bad roll there so um oh, okay. so we had to slow right off for that but he's okay i think okay works out so uh, that kind of put us off near the end but we were um but yeah, we're having a good, having a good run. It's good. good. Yeah. Certainly, cars being used driving really well. Very mature drive. Is he talking anymore? Talking? No. <laughs> no. I didn't go to plan. So no, I had a, I got a puncture about uh, with five miles to go on stage four. Oh no. But it spun me straight away, so I lost 20 seconds, and then the time oh. running on it, and then, um, and then with six miles to go on the one after, I got a puncture on the other side, so I had to just run on it until the end. Oh. So, it's That's just a why test. One stage would round out the day, the rain now really heavy. After his big accident on the snowman, Stephen Wood was finally back out, the rear wheel drive Fiesta rebuilt by the talented Angus Laurie. With new co-driver Tom Bell alongside, the Fiesta was forced out with mechanical problems at first service. Davy McLeod and Eamon Boyle would also retire early, the flywheel parting company with the rest of the engine in stage one. 32nd SRC at the finish, Megan and John O'Kane's day had started with one gear and no brakes in the first loop. That was fixed, but then they had no intercom for the second loop and Megan stopped mid-stage to avoid hitting a baby rabbit. The final stage and the D-Mister failed. 
All this after Meghan had forgotten the Fiesta's keys at the start of the weekend. And just nine seconds up the road at the finish, Ashley Morris and Martin Haggett had struggled readapting to the gravel on the opening loop. They also avoided the same rabbit on the second loop, but were delayed with a time-consuming rear puncture. A clean run on the final stage saw them leapfrog the O'Kanes to give Ashley second in the ladies at the end of the day. Finding these stages unsuitable for the Wii 205, Brian and Scott Gurley were just eight seconds ahead of the Fiesta at the finish. There were a few moments along the way, including this wide moment on the final stage, that had Scott worrying that Brian wasn't going to make it round the corner. Another 13 seconds up the road, Robert Tong and Sean Newlands took the C1 win. Under strict orders to keep the car in one piece for the Grampian, they had to be helped out of the same ditch that had claimed John Wink. They also finished the event with no alternator and were relieved to see the finish. Donald Brooker and Tony Booth endured a tough day out in the Legacy. Three punctures in four stages, costing a lot of time early on. Martin Erskine and Kieran Hislop had done a lot of setup work on the car since the Speyside, particularly in the tyre department. Finding the car to be better but very lively on the loose stages, they survived a very big two-wheel moment in a hairpin on their way to the C2 win. And the 206 finished tied on time with Rue Campbell and Shayna Archibald. The Sunbeam crew loving the return to gravel and particularly enjoying Twiggies and A on their way to fourth in Class M4 at the finish. Third in M4 and 19 seconds up the road, Jim and Charlotte McDowell were another crew to enjoy A in particular. Jim taking fourth in the Haddo Energy Super Seniors, leaving him third in the points. Richard Stewart had been given a few driving tips from Son Peter before this round and was trying out some new techniques. A mysterious engine cut on the first loop delayed things and co-driver Karen had to hold her door shut over the second loop. Despite the issues, the 208 was an excellent 24th. One left, long one right, 230 up middle. <coughs> 2.30 up middle. Crest at top into two left. Graeme Sherry and Ewan Lees found the long half Manta half Cavalier to be a tricky prospect on these loose stages. One of the headlights decided to part company and the gearbox cross member burst early on. Then they bounced the back right corner off a bank at the end of A. Finishing the event with a blown exhaust, they were glad to see the end and take another C3 win. Small crest, caution, small crest, it is deceptive, left seven, don't cut. C80, right one in, C70 down, long right three over 50, and left one in. Right. Craig Wallace had purchased a new eraser to help with any mistakes that Scott Peacock would make. The MG was running well on the stages until they were held up by another crew in A, eventually taking to a ditch to get past. 
The MG finishing just five seconds behind the R2 of Justin Gunning and Stephen Clark. The Fiesta crew suffering a double puncture on both the middle and final loops, but thankfully had two spears both times, Justin taking second in the Moats Offshore Juniors. Second in H2 and 20th, Jim Robertson and Colin Maxwell always go well in their home forests. Delayed when they lost the brakes in stage three, they were concerned when they lost the ignition light, worried that the battery wasn't charging. But the Mark II finished just eight seconds behind ladies winner Aileen Forrest. The evil pilot stalling on a couple of hairpins, which did nothing but annoy her. Aileen deciding at the end of the event that she drives better when she's annoyed, on her way to 19th in the SRC as our run of good form continues. After the service I was a bit well loose there but uh, yeah, had to get back together. And and did he behave? Yes, yeah. always. Then did she, she behave? Then she got in a rage. I get in a rage and, and then uh, I'm made driving. Up, made up time. <laughs> <laughs> so you drive better when you're yeah, in a rage? Yeah. What? Gordon Murray and Michael Cruikshank were another crew to enjoy the return to the gravel. Battling for a top three two-wheel drive position, it all went wrong on the final stage with a time-consuming rear puncture. That left the Mark II 18th in the SRC, but taking the top M5 honours. Small crest, right two crest and long left eight. Long left eight here. And right eight. Second in the Subaru Cup, Mike Moats and Gary McDonald were relieved to reach the finish after a tough day. Trying their best not to damage the car on the loose stages, they were being extra careful, particularly on the final stage. Forty, right five, one fifty, right two, don't cut. Repeat, right two, don't cut into long left three, into turn hairpin left, don't cut. Slow, slow now. Don't cut this one, don't cut it, don't cut it. 50, left five in. Almost throwing the Adam off in stage two, Robert Proudlock and Stephen Brown would take second in M2, but Robert would take the top Moats Offshore Junior Honours. Finding the Adam's short wheelbase a challenge on the loose stages, they were really happy to make the finish. And this result strengthens Roberts Jr.'s points lead. It was a good day. I'm obviously happy to take the junior win. It's a shame about Justin getting those two punctures on that last stage, but that's rallying. I mean, uh, it'll be a... Aye, I can, exactly. We're just happy to get to the end, to be honest. Stephen's done a, a great job in the, in the silly seat, as usual, so uh, really happy to have him next to me again for this one. Just a, a good day overall, I'd say. Five seconds up the road, Oren McDonnell and Ewan Anderson had pushed the boat out with both new suspension and a new set of tyres for the Scottish. Once they sorted the tyre pressures out, they were running really well, taking the class, the Subaru Cup and 15th in the SRC, despite a small drive shaft issue at the end of the day. Really enjoyed the second half of the last stage. Um, it was pretty flowy. I prefer that sort of stuff to the... The flat out stuff, I like the tight, the tight twisty stuff, is quite good fun. Yep. Um, so yeah, but enjoyed the whole day. Good. Any punctures or have you managed to avoid them? No punctures. My word. Yeah. Surprisingly. Yeah, I think we made the mistake of not checking our tyre pressures at the start of stage one, so one of them, by the time we got there, was up to 40, 45 psi or something. So you're a bit skitterish in the back bit, end. A bit skitty, yeah. So. Okay. Just a wee bit. Yeah. <laughs> A few, a few How moments. many ditches did you go in? Oh, we didn't. We weren't in any ditches, but we spent some of the time facing backwards. But oh, <laughs> yeah. second in M4, Paddy Monroe and David O'Brien quickly realised that they weren't going to be able to catch the class leaders. So, taking a safety first approach, the Blue Mark II was just eight seconds down on the M2 winners Keith and Mary Reddick. The MG busting the exhaust on stage two, losing a bit of power, but that was easily sorted in service. And after that, they survived a couple of wee moments on their way to 13th in the SRC.
John Crawford and Karen McLeod produced their best drive on the gravel so far this season. Fourth two-wheel drive and twelfth in the SRC, the white escort was sounding absolutely glorious out in the forests. Oh, hi. That's it. And despite not enjoying the weather and the stage conditions, it was a very successful event for Steve Bannister and Dave Robson. Third two-wheel drive, H2 winner, second historic and a Haddo Energy Super Seniors win, along with the 11th SRC crew home. Second in the two-wheel drives, Peter Stewart and Harry Marchbank had also not enjoyed the final look very much. The footwells of the car swimming in water and gravel after a heavy landing had punched a small hole in the floor. 10th SRC strengthening their lead in the Auto Shop Two Wheel Drive Championship. Bob Adamson and Jamie Edwards kept things safe over the final loop to maintain their ninth place finish. The Fiesta just 11 seconds down on Two Wheel Drive and historic winners Stuart Eggleston and Brian Hodgson. The Pinto-powered Escort absolutely flying all day on the way to a well-deserved eighth. Seventh, despite the misfires, was another excellent result for Rintoul and Hind. The Fiesta just one second behind the Satria Evo of McCulloch and Hendry. Some more suspension tweaks before the final stage, making a big difference for the Proton. And Mark and Michael learning a lot for future events. The Alban Garage Challengers battle went down to the wire. Laurie and Gribben suffering a last stage puncture and taking the win by just six seconds from teammates Patterson and Hind. Both crews are rightfully earning Star Drive nominations after two excellent performances. Just I um, delighted. That's what we came out to do. Um, so really, really happy. Um, a challenging day. You can see that by the nick of us, it wasn't for trying. <laughs> so mere washing to do, but all good. Really, really happy. Washing coming up on the arrows. Left to short right five. Into left three. And flat right two. Into left one. Sixty. Right three. The fastest over the final stage, Henderson and Lees showed once again what they can do in the new car. The Fiesta crew showing definite rally winning pace all day despite the punctures and staking their claim as a crew to watch for the rest of the season. <laughs> I think we both feel pretty good about that. You know, it was a bit of a roller coaster. It was up and down. Good start, bad middle, pretty good finish. So, oh, look, I, I only decided to do it last minute, so that's why we couldn't get any running in the car. So, so we came straight out to get some running in the car, and, and ultimately, you know, we, we can't we can't be unhappy with. So for with a it, taste. It's better than sitting there in the office, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> Also announcing themselves as a crew to watch, Brunton and Sturrock produced their best gravel performance so far, earning a Star Drive nomination. Hugh feeling there's still more to come as he learns to commit to Drew's notes. Second overall was an excellent result for the Fiesta crew. Yeah, I really enjoyed that today, it was really good, really liked the stages, it was a uh, good rally. Uh, car was really good, and uh, yeah, on the, Drew on the notes was brilliant as well. So I was, I'm really just been working on my notes, tuning in to like listening and really committing to. It. If he says it's flat out, you know, taking it flat out and that. So yeah. I lost my way a wee bit in the end, uh, trying to just conserve it. But then I ended up lifting off, and then you end up having like we had a big moment where I just lifted off, and the whole thing just car just loosens off and you slide yeah, off. So yeah, but yeah. You're better, should, you better just keep going. Planted. Yeah, but, yeah, definitely. But uh, it's a lesson learned there. But yeah, no, it was good overall. But continuing the fairy tale season, Michael Binney and Claire Moe once again defied the odds and stuck the Evo on the top step of the podium. A particularly special event to win, especially for Claire, the Scottish being the first international she ever competed on. This result puts them both at the top of the championship standings, with three rallies remaining. Yeah, 
very, very special. This is a, this is a special win for us. Uh, it's a special rally and um, just didn't expect it at all coming into today. So over the moon. Good. Player? Choked. <laughs> to win the Scottish rally. Uh, it is. Claire's seen. I mean, I don't know how many times you've done this, but lost count. Yeah, yeah. we used to stay in that hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's special. Good. And the names that are on the trophy and stuff like that. It's oh, very much so. Crazy. Absolutely very crazy. much so. So, Binny and Mo continue their incredible season, and up next, the SRC welcomes the BRC to the Grampian stages in Aberdeenshire. But before then, we'll leave you in the back seat of the Evo so you can watch a team at the top of their game. Right three, no cut of a crest. C90, right four. And right three opens and tightens to five tights along seven over crest over 60. And left five in, flat crest 60 down. Right six into left two in over crest, 40. Small flat crest, right two in, 70 over small crest, small flat crest, sorry. Right two in, into long left, six in over crest. And right six, no cut, 60. Right one in, left four in, 50 to interceptive left, seven in, 50. Left one over flat crest, 40. Caution, small crest, left six, big bridge, immediate turn left, nine. C80. It's a bloody hairpin. Yep. Right one and left three in. And K right three over bridge. Opens. 50. Long left two in over 40. Into right three in. C100. Left five in. 80. Right four. No cut of a bump. Left one no cut. 40, left one and long left four over 60, into long right seven over 40, long right seven over 40, and left five, 80, keep left of a flat crest, 80, long right four in, 60, keep middle of a flat crest, 40, right one of a flat crest, 50, Long right three in and left two in over crest, 50. Left four in, into right three in. And crest, caution, bridge left five in, right one.